Hey everyone, it's nearly 8.40 in the evening. It's the 21st of March and it's a Thursday. Ooh, I'm actually feeling rather hot in here tonight. Well, again, I've been feeling that all day in here. Anyway, um, a few things to talk about. I've got a couple of minor little rants that I'll get to in a moment. One involving eBay and the failing to notify me I've got messages or to even send me a message to be honest but like I said I'll get to that in a minute the other one's my Hermes uh, but I went to a toy fair Sunday Sunday morning which was quite a, um, a feat for me you know as I'm not really keen on going out anywhere because of my social anxiety and whatnot. But I did get a big box full of loose Lego. A um, couple of other Lego models. I'll show you those in a minute. But there was a stall there. He had five. Five huge containers full of loose Lego. Um, and you could pick up a tub. Fill that tub if you wanted to. With, with however much you wanted. Or as little as you wanted. You take it to one of the guys. They weigh it on their scales. And uh, it was priced as one pence per one gram. Which was um, pretty damn cheap. So I got a lot. A hell of a lot, actually. So I've got all of this in here. An absolute ton of it. Various bits and pieces. Plus, there's twice this much here. But I have sorted through most of it. I've got a 1967... Ford Mustang Fastback from Dinky for four pounds. The guy selling these was selling them these Dinky cars. He had all sorts of makes and models there. It's actually a Matchbox one. I didn't realise Matchbox took over Dinky at some point. But anyway, he was selling these at four pounds each or three for ten pounds. So I could have got another couple for a full ten pounds, but I kind of spent the rest on Lego. <laughs> oh, and I did. Because I couldn't resist. I did get another My Little Pony figurine there from the, the Generation 4 series. Which comes to an end this year. After nine seasons. She was uh, four pounds. Uh, for six pounds. We got fire truck. No figures. Which is probably why that was as cheap as it was. But I don't want the figures anyway. Because I've got loads and loads of firefight figures. Plus, theoretically, I've already got that set because this one here is based on that set. I took the ladder off, basically, and built a box on the back. <laughs> so I bought that one, so I've now got the actual set as well. Um, moving down this way. I've got these. That's not how they were when I bought them, but these are from a 1975 train set. And um, this one was another wagon like that, that someone had built on that. That was incorrect, it should have been this. So I have actually restored that to how that should have been, piece for piece, that's 100% accurate. So is that, and so is that now. This one was actually just missing these bits on the roof. This one had a line of yellow brick going around it, so that was actually built incorrectly. But I've uh, basically corrected everything and returned this one back to the the um, wagon that it was meant to be. Which uh, really wasn't that difficult to do these, to be honest. So, I'm happy with that either way. And I've also been working on a new build, which is over there. The uh, engine shed for my trains where all the repairs and servicing will be done when it's finished the building has come to a, a temporary stop because I haven't got the roof parts that I need or the parts to finish the interior so <laughs> sort of a, an open top building <laughs> it's got two walls and that's it so yeah I've been busy Tinkering with Lego at least for the most of this week. 
I did help my stepdad put carpet down in my brother's bedroom. Uh, and uh, I can't remember if I've mentioned in the previous video, but because my light switch for these floodlights was on here, I was trying to figure ways to get a wire across here without it being a, a trip hazard so I could still, you know, use my floodlights. And then two days ago, it finally dawned on me just to move the frickin' light switch. <laughs> so that's all I did. That way I haven't got to trail the wires across here, have I? And I got rid of the PC power supply and just changed it for a 12 volt power adapter. Some 12 volt 1 amp. That should be okay for these floodlights. It has been so far, so I don't think it's been getting too hot. It's been getting hot because that's what power supplies do, but not ridiculously hot. Oh. Still got loads of tasks to do. Turn those off. Sort of limping around a little bit as well because uh, last night I was sitting on the bed. Why does my mattress always do that? And uh, I was picking dead skin off the bottom of my foot. Dead dry skin, right? <laughs> I was come to this big stubborn bit and I'm like, oh, it won't come off. Finally got it off and it was a little bit sore pulling it off. And I didn't realise it went that deep because it actually went too deep and now I've got a sore there. But it's not so bad tonight. It has gotten better throughout the day. <sighs> anyway little rant regarding my Hermes couriers. In the last two weeks I've received two parcels delivered by them. Both of them have been squished. The other one I've actually put in the bin but here's one of them. Look. You see it's been squished. Two. One. Once in a blue moon I can actually understand because accidents do happen you know. There's always a chance that someone can be clumsy in the bloody warehouse and drop them or drop something on them. You know, or something gets knocked over onto them. Which is the main reason they do recommend that you pack your items well. <laughs> which is why I always make sure I pack mine well. <clears throat> you know, to give the item a chance to arrive in one piece. The only thing I don't like posting is something that's breakable, like glass, or ceramics, or, you know, mugs and things like that, because I'm always worried that they're going to get smashed. Anyway, this one actually puzzled me when it turned up, because I, I haven't ordered anything, I haven't bought anything. But it turns out it's a return. I didn't know about it. See? The um, buyer returned the seat post. Because I went and fudged up basically and got the diameter of the post wrong. So that's my fault. So, But if I'd known he wanted a refund and wanted to send this back for a refund, I would have done it and he wouldn't have had to open a case. But I didn't even know a case was open. I probably would have if I checked my emails, so that part is my fault. But usually, when you log into your eBay account, there's a little bell thing up there, and that's your notifications. And usually when you get things in your inbox, your message inbox, you know, you'll get a little notification thing up there. I got nothing. My camera shut off. <laughs> I apologise for that. <laughs> Stupid thing. Anyway, yeah, I got nothing. I had no idea eBay had been sending me messages in regards to the case that had been opened. And when I looked... Because obviously I went and had a look at the case. It's been closed now. Because um, the item was returned and obviously the tracking said it had been delivered. So eBay's done all the necessary refunds, blah, blah, blah. So I just owe eBay the refund for that. Which is a bit annoying, but can't do anything about that. It is what it is. Anyway. Um, but when I was reading the reasons the buyer had opened up the case it actually said he'd sent me a message and I hadn't replied but I looked in my inbox and there was no message from him the last one I got and I've got the screen cap for this was 7th of March 
there was nothing after that saying about a refund. If there was, I would have said, yep, send it back and I'll send you a refund. Not a problem. <clears throat> you know? But for some reason, that message never came through. And that's not the first time that has happened on that eBay account either. Um, he'd sent me a message before for something and I, it just didn't come up. So that is annoying me. It's not happening on my other, my main eBay account. But on my uh, spare one, it seems to happen quite often. That messages just aren't showing up or getting through. So I'm not going to say the guy's lying, you know, that he actually didn't send me the um, message. But uh, I think it's more likely that eBay system is pissed up and just not sent it through. So, that's a bit annoying. So, anybody is going to bill me now for the refund, but uh, I'd rather do that because I actually haven't got the refund at the minute. So, <laughs> I don't run a business. I don't just have money sitting there that I can give refunds with, you know. I wish I did, so I didn't have to go through all this, you know. But what can I do? If I haven't got the money, I can't give it to them, so I just have to owe eBay. That's the only way I can do it. I actually wish I could turn it into a business, you know. So I'd get off my benefits altogether. But I wouldn't know how to start an eBay shop, you know. What would I sell? I didn't have the worry of being able to sell enough to, you know, pay the bills and whatnot. <clears throat> Storage for the items would be another problem. Actually, if I cleared out a lot of my junk, that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but to be honest, I wouldn't want to be a seller of, you know, cheap Chinese crap anyway. Because there's a lot of um, UK sellers, you know, that do that. They buy their stock in from China and then sell it over here. But... I really don't want to be one of those sorts of person. I'd want to sell something that's good, you know, good quality, even if it's used. Like this seat post, something that's in good condition, good quality, that's not going to break, you know, two days later because it's cheap shit made in China. <clears throat> so, yeah. So I have to admit, piss off fly, <laughs> I wonder what the hell that was on my arm, it was a fly. Anyway, as I was saying, I have to admit, I actually find it embarrassing to admit, you know, I'm on be benefits. I'm on employment and support allowance because of my Asperger's syndrome, so it's not direct unemployment, or universal credit as they call it now. But still, you know, when people talk about jobs and things, and all I can say is I'm on benefits. Not doing anything. I just, I just don't like it. I just, you know, it'd be nice just to say, well, I do this for a living, you know. But with Asperger's syndrome, or autism as it's commonly called now, because I've done away with the Asperger's diagnosis, Everything is just made so bloody difficult to do anything. Especially if you've got the wrong end of the scale like I have. <laughs> oh. So, um, that's why I'm trying to do things to actually force myself to get out and about so I can try and get over that fear of going places. You know, getting in the car with mum, and my stepdad, or my brother, or a friend, or something, you know, and going to Norwich for the day, or even going further than Norwich. I don't know what 
went wrong. But when I was a kid, I used to go on school trips to Norwich, with no, um, London rather, with no problems. I've been to France on a school trip, no problems. It just seems that when I left school, that fear started to get worse and worse and worse. And it's just got worse over the years to where I feel I wouldn't be able to sleep the night before due to anxiety. And that in turn can upset my tummy. So I'm then worrying about where the nearest toilet is going to be. Which then makes the anxiety even worse and my tummy upset even worse. You know, I just feel like I've, I've got myself in a vicious cycle here. And I don't know how to get out of it. <laughs> because I do miss going places. And I do miss it, you know. My mum would say, do you want, want to come with me to go to Norwich or something? I'd be like, yep, let's go. Nowadays I'd be like, oh no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> and I do miss that and I do hate that. But like I said, I just, I, I don't know, aside from forcing myself back into doing things like that on a regular basis, I don't know how to get myself out of it. I don't know if there's any other Aspies that watch my channel who would uh, be able to relate to that. <laughs> I thought it was. That is brilliant. There was a going off subject. But I'd noticed a new member on the Barricade Lantern Collectors Group on Facebook. Um, called Steve. I'm not going to give his full name out, but I'll call him Steve. His first name. And um, most collectors know the videos. I found them a few years or so ago um, by a YouTuber called Raleigh's Dog who actually filmed this guy's barricade lamp, traffic cone, pardon me, and vintage barricade collection in, uh, in America. So it's all American lamps and cones and barricade and things. And this new guy by the name Steve had been posting similar things to these groups. He's a new member. And I was like, I know that face and that profile pic. <laughs> and I looked at one here and I thought, I know that garage door as well. <laughs> so I actually asked, I said, you know, are you the same guy from the videos? And that um, Riley's dog had filmed a few years ago on a, you know, a rather large collection of barricade lamps. And he's just said, yep. <laughs> <clears throat> so that is absolutely cool. And he's uh, joined the group. I don't know if he's added anything to his collection. I'm always adding to mine. I've got one that I won't get till August. Because it's currently in Australia. <laughs> so there's an Australian collector over there. Um, he's got, or he's bought me a green version of a lamp that I've got an amber here that I bought recently. Um, and he's going to bring it over with him when he comes over in August. Because he originally comes from England. So, um, but he lives over in Australia now. But he, he comes over once a year. So he's coming over in August. He's going to bring a bunch of other lamps as well. And he's going to bring this one. He's going to charge me what he paid for the lamp plus UK postage. So, can't complain about that. Um, and there's another collector and Facebook friend of mine as well who's going to be buying a job lot of lamps. There's so many, and it's going to cost so much, he's going to do it in two job lots. Um, I'm going to get a couple of these off of him as well. Three, maybe four, I haven't decided yet. But, uh, yeah, either way, it's going to be three at the very least. Because I've already got one. So one, at least another one to go with that to make a pair. And two, which has actually got a black 
what we call a shoulder, not the yellow one. That's basically the only difference. The lid piece is black, not yellow. And I'd like a couple of those as well. So um, they're reserved when he gets them. But I don't know how long that's going to take, but no rush, so... Oh, here we go. <laughs> I like that tweet, and then that's truth as well. Did a bunch of spring cleaning, and now I'm the proud new owner of another box of random cords. Yep. <laughs> I actually do have a box of cords. Actually, I've got several boxes of cords for various different uses. Right. Oh. A friend of mine's been messaging me. He probably thinks I'm ignoring him. I'm not. I've just got the camera on. <laughs> I've got this annoying habit of just disappearing away from the computer without telling anyone. And that must really piss my friends off. Because then I don't reply for ages. And I'm guessing they either get pissed off or worried that I'm either ignoring them or they've done something wrong or I'm upset or something. So I really should actually tell them so they don't worry. But it just slips my mind. I just get up and go and do other things. Even more so when I'm down at Mum's because I'm always getting called away to do things anyway. So, on that note, I'm going to shut the camera down. I've got a video to edit already. I've got this one to edit. And I do apologise for the lack of videos on this, um, on this um, Englishman channel. I just really haven't been feeling it lately. I want to do videos, but I don't want to do vlogs like this. I want to do something interesting, and I'm just... My mind is just a blank on what to do, other than just pick the video up and talk about random crap. If anybody wants me to talk about specific subjects, except religion and politics, I don't do those. <clears throat> Not because I don't want people to know my views, it's just that I find online people just can't hold a civil debate. I'm all up for a civil debate on both of those. But in my experience, especially on Facebook... If you haven't got the same view as someone else, they want to jump down your throat, you know, and rip your testicles up through your bloody body, you know. And uh, I just don't like that. But like I said, I'm always up for a civil debate. So if anyone wanted to debate with me on those subjects, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, a civil debate, I'm all up for it. You know, I've had people resort to petty name calling to me and all sorts discussing those. So I just, I just stay away from religion and politics. But if you want me to talk about, you know, a news article or something, give me ideas. I haven't got a Twitter at the minute because I closed the old account. I need to set another one up at some point. Otherwise, I would put a link to Twitter and you know, and you could tweet me. Uh I don't have a Facebook page. It's just going to have to be in the comments for now, I'm afraid. <clears throat> but anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I will talk to you all again very soon. Bye-bye.